today we have an all new everyday makeup basket, aka shop my stash, where we're gonna pick out a new makeup basket for me to work out of for the next month or so. Okay, I'm a little overdue on this one, but I thought this was nice timing because as we probably know, the Sephora VIB sale is about to start. And this week I will have a few videos relating to the sale. And I feel like this time of year we hear a lot of recommendations. There's a lot of focus on like buy, 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 buy this, buy that. So I would like to offer this video as some balance to that and remind you to use the makeup that you love. That's what I'm doing right now. Though, like I said, I will have the support videos also, but I've actually been falling back in love with a lot of products that I've had for a while, so let's just talk about that. Also, yes, the Carrie Bradshaw hair is still here from my Halloween costume. Keep in mind, um, I'm filming this video like the week before you're seeing it, but anyways. Now, in these videos, I always kick them off reflecting on the last makeup basket, so we'll do a little bit of that. I will tell you my standouts and just like what I've been feeling with my makeup collection in general and some products I've been reaching for. And then in the second half, we will go through my makeup drawers. I'm pointing over here because they're over here and we will pick out the new ones. Okay, let's start with the palettes. I was really focusing on these three and let's talk about the one that's on my eyes right now. It's the Untamed from Sigma. This has been around for a while and it's still one of my favorite Sigma palettes. So you might be thinking, like if you saw the pile, you might be thinking, okay, today she's wearing Making Mauves because I have this like purpley mauve look on, but I'm actually wearing this. So my crease color is the shade Instinct. And then I added a little bit of this like mauve gray for the, well, it's not gray, I don't know, taupe, that's the color, for the outer corner. And then for the inner portion of the lid, I did just a little bit of Moxie. And then I made a wing somewhat like a like a smudgy unperfect wing with this blue dauntless and then i do my blue mascara over top whenever i wear this blue mascara you guys are like oh my gosh look at your mascara so it's the one from oma beauty it is their salute to the sun mascara it comes in black and blue i have the blue one for me i think this is like you remember the blue dress versus was it yellow? What was it a few years back, like quite a few years back now, where there was that like global debate about what color the dress was? That's how I feel when I wear this mascara because for me, I think it's blue. And then I always get comments from people saying, I like your purple mascara. So what color do you think my mascara is? Leave me a comment down below. But I was really loving this one. I feel like I did some variation of this eye a lot this rotation, usually just taking this, this shade right here to smudge out at the lash line, do a little bit of a blue liner. Some days I paired that a little bit more neutral and some days I went more mauve like today. One of my favorite looks this rotation, I will pop a photo up or like some version of it up on the screen. I created with this one and I took these two shades. First I took the mustard in the crease, then this uh, like camo green all over the lid and then the shade Envy over top and then I like smudged in a little bit of these lighter gold shades to do this like smudgy green look. I thought that was really fun and pretty. I hadn't worn green in a while and I love green eyeshadow. So this was a really fun one for me. In the beginning of the rotation, my most used was definitely this very old palette, the Modern Renaissance palette. So if you have this one, maybe this could be some inspiration to use it. I was kind of wondering if this was going to feel expired. I was, it was almost a test to put it in this past rotation because I was like, well, let's see if the shadows still perform the same, if anything seems different because I've had this for a while, but nothing seems to be wrong with it. No irritation on my eyes, no strange smells. So I really enjoyed this one. And do you guys see like the giant pan I have in this shade? This shade's pretty big, this one. I I still love this palette. I mean, even when I reach back into it, I think it's just so fun for every day. I didn't really reach into the cranberry tones as much as I was anticipating I would. I feel like I was mostly just grabbing this for everyday looks. Like this is just the perfect brown. Making mauves is also always a favorite. This one always is pretty just for like an everyday look with a little bit of a purple. Now, if you guys watched a video I posted last month where I shared my travel makeup basket, I feel like at that point was almost when it, I sort of swapped out my makeup products because I grabbed things to travel with. So 
Some of what we talked about in my last Shop My Stash update, I haven't really used in a bit because I then was using like the travel makeup products. And then I've just kind of been like picking and choosing here and there. But let me show you what I've been reaching for like most days recently that I've had for a while and I've fallen back in love with. It is this duo from Iconic London. This is called the Silk Glow Duo. I have the rose gold shade. Now it's hard for me to show on camera because the pan fell out. So the this pink pan right here fell out like right when I got it, like it broke in the mail. But the reason I've been wearing this lately is because I've been seeing so many videos that are creating the makeup look that I like to call the Charlotte Tilbury look. It's not even necessarily always created with Charlotte Tilbury products, though it normally is, but for me, I would identify this makeup style as like very pink, but not just bright pink. Like the specific tone is very much like a rose gold, um, heavy blush, heavily highlighted. And I've been thinking lately, I'm like, I wanna do this, this look. And I, I see so many people doing it with like the four pan Charlotte Tilbury face palettes or even the larger face palettes. And then I started thinking to myself, like, well, should I just buy one of those palettes? Because I always love the way that effect um, comes across on the cheeks. But I was like, you know what? No, let me see what I have that I can create that with. Because I'm sure I have something that's going to give me a similar look. And that's when I remembered that I had this. And I feel like I haven't used this that much in months. Like, I don't really remember using this a lot since last winter. So I pulled it out. And, oops. But since pulling this out and like putting it into my, my vanity over there where I get ready. I don't think there's been a day that I haven't used this. Don't get me wrong, some days I'm layering it over my Project Pan blushes. Today, that's what I did. I used my Glossier Cloud Paint and then did a layer of this of this over top. But it's giving me that effect that I want. I specifically wanted to share that because I felt like it was a great instance where I wanted to purchase a product and I thought, okay, this product is going to solve this need that I have. That's, that's like the whole concept of shopping your stash. I'm like, well, what do I already have that I can achieve that look with? So I thought that was fun to throw into this video. What else was I using this month? Okay, I put my Catrice True Skin Foundation in. This is one of my favorite foundations at the drugstore. But I just have not been tan enough to use this lately. I mean, look at me right now. And then look at this foundation. There is just absolutely no way. I want to tell you guys my shade, but it has fallen off. Like there was a sticker on here that fell off. And I think there was a while there that I remembered it in my head. But now I, I don't know what shade this is, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, but it probably wouldn't be helpful e either because it's not even my own shade. But what I tried doing this month was mixing this in with the LA Girl White Foundation Mixer. And... With that, I, I was able to create an ideal shade for myself, but as I mentioned in another video, that kind of makes the foundation a little bit more dry for me, which I'm hoping in a month or two, I'll be, I'll be able to better tolerate, but as I have said in almost every video lately, I just upped my tretinoin prescription so the bottom of my face is a little peely, and that combo wasn't working. So all of that to say, I didn't reach for this too, too much like I was expecting to, but I still love this formula. What I did reach for a lot though was this, and I actually finished it up. This is the Catrice True Skin High Coverage Concealer. So, you know, the sister to the foundation. And you saw me talk about this in my empties video. This is all used up, but I had saved the empty because I wanted to be able to show it to you guys in my concealer video that went up a couple of weeks ago. I did use this up. I miss it so much already. Like anytime I even reach for another concealer, in my head I'm like, mm, wish I was reaching for the Catrice True Skin. But I'm trying to use up some concealers before I either repurchase this or try out some other ones. I'm like, I gotta go through a few of them. So this one is used up. I was also trying to remember if this had already happened before the video, but wait for it. Bam, pan on the CoverGirl powder. This is their Clean Fresh Powder. I have the shade 120 Fair. Oops, there's like so much powder on here. Am I, am I spilling on my bed? This is one of the best of the best. I love this powder. I feel like once I use up my Boy Beauty powder, this is the next one I'm gonna try to pan. Okay, also had in Charlotte Tilbury Pink Gasm. I feel like this also helped aid in my creation of the Charlotte Tilbury look using this and then the highlight from the Iconic London Duo over top. Loved this, always get excited to use this. I just think it has the most like radiant, 
natural but still not natural at the same time <laughs> look on the cheeks it's beautiful we are now going to dig through my makeup drawers to pick out some products that i want to focus on next let's jump into that okay let's start off one i haven't had in a bit is this one. Oh no wait that's not what i thought it was okay wait 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 this one this is from ilia this is their true skin serum foundation this wasn't a complete favorite for me when it launched, but I'm thinking let's put it into the basket and maybe this will help me decide if I want to keep this one or not. Maybe I'll use it this rotation and decide, yeah, it's not for me, or maybe I'll feel the opposite. We'll see, but let's put this in. I have mine in the shade 1.5, which is good because I'm very pale right now. And that was kind of my mindset when I'm looking at this. I'm like, what? Where are my lightest foundations? For concealer, I'm thinking this one from Kosas. This is their very viral revealer concealer, and I like this one, but these tend to go bad quickly. I, that's what I've heard, so I wanna use mine up while I can because I have had this for a bit, and I don't want it to go bad on me and like expire before I get a chance to finish it. Part of me is like, do I grab another foundation? But I'm actually thinking no because I have my Project Pan foundation that I'm trying to use up. So do I want to grab a primer though? Let's do something like a bit more mattifying. Not that I would say this is incredibly matte. I mean, it has a glow, but it's also not like shiny. You know what I'm saying? This is the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. I know that's so funny. I just said I wanted to grab a matte one, but looking, I don't really have any matte ones left except for the elf poreless putty but i'm thinking this will be a good one because i'm pretty close to using it up and wouldn't that be nice to finish it okay and with that i think that's everything from this drawer let's go into the next one okay this is my drawer of cream products do we want to grab a cream blush okay hard to say because i do have my project pan blush that i'm trying to use up and lately i've been getting back into my powder blushes so let's actually skip a cream blush but maybe a cream bronzer what do you guys think let me do this. This is a cream contour from Fenty. It's one of their matchsticks, and I have the shade Amber Suede. This is very much like a contour shade, not a bronzer, but I feel like that'll be nice because we'll do this for cream, and then when we get into the powder bronzer drawer, I'll grab a powder bronzer. Does that sound like a good idea? Okay, let's do that. Very quick little visit in this drawer. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay, all of the powders. I have been craving this one from Sigma again. I do have my Bite Beauty Powder. We know that. I'm trying to use that one up in my Project Pan, so that's obviously going to stay. But this palette, no, this is not a palette. What am I saying? This powder from Sigma that launched earlier this year has quickly become one of my favorite powders. There is something so blurring about this. And lately, I've talked about it in a lot of videos, my forehead acne has been pretty bad. So I have been reaching for any powder that i have that's like super diffusing and like a little bit mattifying but not too dry and that's what this is like something about this it helps kind of camouflage that texture that i've been a little insecure about lately so this is a must that's it for powders let's do blush bronzer highlight okay first things first i'm definitely keeping in that cheek duo that we talked about earlier that is not going anywhere but what else do we want to do looking over the selection it is like mostly high end so let's pick a drugstore favorite for a few of these let's do the highlighter from essence look how gorgeous this shade is this is called staggering i love any highlight that's a little bit of a pink shade so i feel like this will be really beautiful this has to go in for sure okay for another blush now keep in mind we've got the pink one from earlier that i talked about like in the duo We've got an orangey one from my Project Pan. And so let's do this very bold blush. This is from the in-house brand at Ulta. This is called Southern Sunset. Such a pretty berry shade. It looks like it might be a little deep for me when you see it in the pan, but I like to apply this very sheer. It has this gorgeous, like very much sun kissed look to it. So I adore this blush. For a bronzer, this one actually is high end, but I want to do Ambra, Am, wait, am I saying Ambra from Nabla? This blush, no, I'm struggling. This is a bronzer, but this is such a gorgeous kind of luminous bronzer, and I've been liking that look. I feel like it'll pair beautifully with the highlight, so let's grab this one. If you watched my most recent vlog, you're probably like, girl, didn't you just clean out this lip drawer? And I did, and somehow it just becomes a mess immediately afterwards, but let's pick out some lip products. 
Okay, another Fenty one. I grabbed this recently. This is the Gloss Balm Heat in the shade Hot Choco Lit. And it is a sheer brown. So pretty for fall here. Can you really see this right now? There you go. I'm trying a slightly different lighting and everything set up in this, so hopefully we like it. This is really pretty. I love these like brown tones for fall, so let's put this in. Let's also grab its friend while we're at it. This is Fussy. The like original one from Fenty. Well, it's not the original. The original is a different shade, but this is another super popular one from the brand. Okay, let's do this one from Bite Beauty. This was a shade I made myself. So if you look at the name, it just says Kelly, but this was a shade that I made at their lip lab. I think it's gorgeous. So one of my favorites, obviously I'm biased, but let's put this in. And then I always like a lighter nude to be able to pair with lip liners. So let's do e.l.f. Creme. This is always a staple for me. Now let's talk about the palettes. Okay, Natasha Denona Glam. I love throwing this one in quite frequently because it is just one of my favorite palettes in general. I love these like um, somewhat cooler neutral tones. So I always really like the looks I make with this one. And I want to throw in the Sigma Alice palette too because even though like I've tested this out quite a bit, I still feel like there's more fun I want to have with this, you know? A new palette doesn't only need to be used like once or twice. Like I wanna keep enjoying it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw this into rotation. And then I always like to throw in something a little bit fun. So this was just screaming to me in my palette drawer. I was like, okay, wait, let's grab e.l.f. This a little mint quad from their um, Bite Size Palette Collection. Here, hopefully that's a little bit less bright and you can see it, but I think this would be so fun to pair actually with Natasha Denona. Like I'm thinking some of these more silvery taupes mixed with this. And another reason I wanted to grab this was because I wanna do a gray silvery look, very glam because I saw Lauren May Beauty wearing a similar one in a video recently and I was like, okay, I gotta recreate that. So. This is coming in. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.